Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just go ahead and take a look how we can SSH into this droplet to actually control it. So what we want to do here is just take a look at our IP address, that is the IPv4 mostly, and go back to our terminal. Now, here's the folder where I created two files, the DigitalOcean key and DigitalOceanKey.public. You can get rid of the public file safely because it's stored on your remote server. Now, what you need to do is in order to SSH, you have to write SSH. You have to give the credential file, that is your private file, using the dash i flag. And what this would be is our DO key, just like that. Then you need to pass in the credential for authentication, right? With which username do you want to be authenticated? Well, DigitalOcean creates a default account for you using the root username and you can use that. You can only use that. As a matter of fact, you cannot use any, any other username. But yeah, root would work fine. And then you want your IP address right here, right? And <clears throat> hit enter. So once you do that, you're going to see it ask you for a message like this. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you're not very paranoid, it's just always go ahead and OK to trust the source because the, you're going to see this message only the first time because of how the SSH protocol works and the authentication works of the SSH key. I don't exactly have an idea how, how this authenticity actually works but more or less you never really need to care about this after the first um, authentication assuming that you are not in a in a network which is very very you know you have the you have the expectation that you are being monitored or something like that in those cases you're just gonna say yes so anyway once you do that you're gonna see that you get into your DigitalOcean tutorial instance just like I am under the root account and if you take a look at the memory, you're going to see that you have a total of 985 megabytes, which is one GB. But, uh, you know, uh, the DigitalOcean instance might be reserving some of that memory for for some some other purposes. I don't exactly know, but more or less you have roughly about 700 megabytes of memory on this instance for you waiting to work and exploit. And you can see for the disk space as well, you have 25 G uh, gigabytes of SSD, which is, which was just promised, which comes with a about a one GB of operating system and other files already installed. So yeah, there's that. So yeah, that's how you're gonna boot into your DigitalOcean machine. You, that's how you're gonna SSH into that and take control. So as a matter of fact, what we can do is just go ahead and install nginx real quick so that i can just show you that how easy it is to just have a hello world so once we install nginx you're gonna see that nginx actually let's just go with apt-get update first and then apt-get install nginx so once you do that you're gonna see that nginx automatically enables itself and listens on your port 80 of your ip address and is ready to respond to people who are coming to your website right it's a very lightweight server very powerful um, a lot of companies use it so you're in good hands so once it's installed you're gonna see you get a message like this and you can check the status of nginx and you can see that it is loaded and it is active right so now if you go ahead on the same IP address and take a look you're gonna see that you get a message like this welcome to nginx right which is being delivered by this computer which you own which sits somewhere in new york and uh, yeah so you can just share this ip address to anyone and they're gonna see the same message all along the world how cool is that so yeah that's basically it how you're gonna ssh into a digital ocean droplet because this is not a programming tutorial i'm not really gonna get into how you set up a server and all that stuff but yeah you get the idea so that's all for this video and i'm gonna see you then in the next one